The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house in the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. When they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in, in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, Bethany Lutheran Church, Merry Christmas. It is so good to be with all of you tonight to celebrate the birth of Jesus, this wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, who first laid his head in a manger, a feeding trough for animals. And it is an incredible story, isn't it? One that I think that we are all still captivated by even 2,000 years later. But let me tell you, being a pastor can sometimes take a little bit of the magic away from the whole birth story because us pastors, we know things. <laughs> I was recently reminded of this as I was listening to a uh, sermon podcast that I listened to. It's called... Um, Pulpit fiction. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? <laughs> Pulpit fiction. And uh, the hosts were talking about something that I, I think a lot of us pastors know about, but we never mention because if we think that it might ruin the whole Christmas story for everyone. And I'm going to tell you now this closely guarded secret. Okay, now here it is. Due to some kind of translation issues with the text and what we know about first century architecture, a lot of scholars think Jesus was probably not born in a stable. He was probably born in a house. This is where you gasp. Okay. Yeah, that was good. You guys are good actors. Think about all the decorations we would have to throw away if people knew the truth. Every nativity scene that you have, right? We have two in our house and they were expensive. <laughs> My poor visual liturgy team, they're, they're really going to be on me about this tomorrow. <laughs> now the story of Jesus' birth would seem so different, right, if that were true. And it, and it makes your head spin with all the what-ifs. It really got me thinking this week. We all have a birth story of some kind. And in any one of them, if you change one little detail here or there, the entire story would seem different. But then I realized that a birth story is never really about the birth itself or the circumstances or the story of the birth. The birth story is always about the person that is being born or the person or who that person will be. So just this year I had a birth story where it seemed like a little single detail that, that change could have changed the whole story. 
And for those of you who know me, you probably know I'm talking about my daughter, Aylin, uh, who is not, uh, who was born on my birthday on March 7th, but that was not supposed to be the case. Now, even before the birth, I was, of course, fine with the idea that maybe Aylin would be born on my birthday and that I would share a birthday because I'm a twin and so I've always shared a birthday. <laughs> but my wife, Kirsten, thought that over and she must have looked at me and then looked at my twin brother, Neil, and thought that would be a bad omen. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we went into our meeting with the doctor on March 6th, thinking we were going to schedule a C-section for March 8th. Now our doctor was this laid back, kind of go with the flow, talk it all over kind of doctor, would always listen to our input. Unfortunately, our doctor was on vacation in Montana skiing that week, and so we got the other doctor. And the other doctor was not a laid-back guy. This new doctor, whom we had just met for the very first time, was very opinionated. And a conversation with him was like trying to talk to a tornado. He was just like a force of nature. And so Kirsten and I, we went in for this doctor's appointment, March 6th for the checkup, and, uh, and planning to schedule March 8th. But this other doctor had other ideas. And so he told us, the baby was looking healthy and that he would prefer to, you know, schedule the procedure the next day in case the baby would flip or something might change in the next two days. My personal theory is that he had a tea time on March 8th. <laughs> I don't know that for sure. But we must not have looked convinced because he went on to tell us the most confusing metaphor I've ever heard in my life. He said, imagine you have a toddler and on one side of a highway is a bag of money, and the other side of the highway is your toddler. And if I told you there was a 99% chance that your toddler could get from one side to the other with no money or with no problems, would you send him? Uh, <laughs> no? I mean, where do you even start with that? I have so many questions. First, why does a toddler care about a bag of money? <laughs> Second, how much money is in the bag? Because <laughs> that's not bad odds, I'm just saying. No, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. But there was no convincing this other doctor, and so we decided to go into the hospital the next day, and long story short, we welcomed our daughter Aylin into the world on my birthday. Now sometimes I do wonder what if, what if our doctor had not been on vacation that day? What if Aylin had been born on March 8th instead? Would she have been a different person? Would she still be the smiley, happy, squirmy little girl that she is today? While eating Cheerios, would she still say, nom, 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 which she does, and it's super cute? Of course she would. And at the end of the day, a birth story, of course, is not about the story or the circumstances as much as it is about the person that is being born. And the truth of the matter is that if you could tell the story of Jesus, you could tell the story, we've heard it a thousand different ways, and you could always wonder what if, and you could play out a thousand different scenarios concocted from alternate translations based on different archaeological records, but it would still be the same Jesus. It would still be the same man who healed the world by touching lepers. It would be the same man who opened the eyes of the blind. It would be the same man who preferred the company of fishermen to that of priests and rulers. It would be the same man who broke down social barriers that stood in the way of God's love. This baby wrapped up in swaddling clothes who first laid his head in a manger. Don't worry, there are no translation issues with manger. That's safe. This is the same Jesus who went to the cross proclaiming his love for all people, all races, all creeds, all orientations, and all cultures. 
This is the same God that loves you for who you are, not who the world expects you to be. It is the same God who will always welcome you home regardless of what you've done, how bad you've messed up, or how lost and confused you might feel. The scripture we heard today would be true no matter how it happened. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Today and always, no matter what your story is or who you are, no matter how we understand Jesus' story, that gift of Jesus belongs to you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas.